Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this session, I'm going to give lecture about uh, the uh, second prose in the first unit of uh, DGVC Foundation English 4. This is a uh, family shattered. A family shattered was written by a Canadian writer Normitsu Onishi. Before moving with the session, subscribe the channel if you are new to my channel. Normitsu Onishi is a Japanese Canadian journalist this writer was born in japan and when he was very young of course you know four years old he was uh, shifted to canada along with his family he lived in canada okay he was born in japan and brought up in canada and uh, this writer who studied in uh, princeton university and there he served as a chief editor for the student newspaper and, uh, he was also working as a reporter uh, for the press called uh, the uh, Detroit Free Press and uh, of course uh, he was also working for uh, the uh, New York Times uh, as a police reporter okay this writer uh, uh, one of the members uh, of the New York Times reporting team uh, which has received uh, a Pulitzer Prize uh, in 2015 for uh, the international reporting for coverage of uh, 2014 Ebola virus epidemic in West Africa Okay, uh, this uh, short prose, okay, which talks about uh, uh, virus, okay, how it has demolished the uh, happiness uh, in a family and uh, which shattered uh, the family members. Uh, a particular family was collapsed completely because of this virus, okay, in West Africa. There are a few characters like uh, Kaiser Dar, Kaiser, K A I Z T E R, Kaiser Dar, D O U R, Kaiser. Kaiser is, you know, uh, the central character. Uh, he was about, you know, 22 years old. Kaiser was 22 years old. And his friend was uh, uh, Teddy Dovey, T E D D Y D O W E, Teddy Dovey. He is about 21 years old. And uh, Kaiser's mom, uh, his mother was, you know, Mammy, M A M I E, Mammy Dorian. Mammy's uh, actual name is Ya O Y H. Okay. And uh, Kaiser's father was Edwin. Okay. Edwin uh, is his father. Uh, okay. Uh, these are, you know, some uh, notable characters in this uh, prose. This prose, you know, opens with uh, the dead body of uh, Kaiser. Actually, this story was narrated by. His friend uh, Teddy Dovey. Teddy Dovey is uh, Kaiser's friend. He's about 21 years old. So this guy is narrating the incident. Okay, so it it gets opened with the dead body of uh, Kaiser. Okay, in a you know in a mangrove uh, swamp, where his body was carried to bury, and uh, this fellow was died uh, because of the virus Ebola virus. Okay, it's a dangerous virus. Okay, this virus was you know. Uh, disturbing the west africa uh, in 2014 and uh, it was uh, you know um, appeared in 1976 first and the later it came on 2014 okay in this you know there are about 12000 people were killed particularly those uh, uh, three states uh, the states are like um, liberia uh, sierra leone and guinea so these are the three states which were affected severely because of this virus uh, this guy, Kaiser, who belongs to the state called Liberia, okay? And um, when his body was, you know, being buried, uh, there are, you know, few people who came there and gathered and they are trying to bury his body. And all these things are being narrated by his friend, uh, uh, Teddy Dovey, okay? And uh, there, you know, his family was not there. Nobody was representing from his family, Kaiser's family. And only his mom was there. His mom, you know, she was trying her best, but she couldn't come. Uh, but uh, the mother, you know, who sent a rose to bury the rose along with the uh, dead body, okay? And uh, there was, you know, caretakers who are doing all these works, right? Actually, uh, Kaiser is a basketball player, okay? He's, you know, quite popular player. And uh, but unfortunately, he couldn't make his present for the next, uh, you know, match, next game. Before that, he passed away. And he's explaining how he was infected with this, you know, virus. His uncle said once, like, you know, it is like bomb, this Ebola virus, right? It's like a bomb. And it is also known as, you know, family disease. 
uh, if one of the family member gets infected with the virus, the whole family will get it. The whole family will be collapsed. So in West Africa, usually uh, a family was said to be uh, an important unit, uh, but unfortunately, families are being you know collapsed because of this virus. So uh, the uh, main tragedy of uh, the epidemic is uh, uh, the distraction of families in uh, West Africa. Okay, so actually, Casey's father was working in a government hospital. It was in a small clinic uh, where he was working as a chief administrator. Okay, in this clinic, there are about six people were died because of this virus within a month of you know Ebola's arrival. So as there are 29 employees are working, six people were died within a month of the the, the virus arrival to the, the place. Uh, so people are very scaring to talk to each other like how we were uh, you know spending our time, how we were living during the uh, you know severe epidemic of uh, COVID-19. Like that, people in uh, West Africa were living like this. The health centers there. Uh, in west africa they are you know completely crumpled because they were not provided with you know uh, the basic facilities to treat the patients because uh, the country itself struggling to manage because of this virus outbreak the hospital was like you know state run redemption hospital and from there uh, uh, cases father was infected uh, actually uh, when his father was tested positive uh, for, uh, for ebola but uh, the uh, authority the management uh, they didn't reveal this to his family case's father was you know about 40 he is in 40 he passed away uh, because of this virus so uh, when his father was buried uh, you know only 20 people came uh, even those people are uh, workers so his family members were not ready to uh, see his dead body because they were scaring because they feel like you know they'll get uh, infected okay that's why they're scaring to uh, visit uh, see the dead body of uh, Casey's father so the neighbors of the family you know they get to know about this and because of this they try to keep the distance to the family uh, Casey's family so since uh, the neighbors are you know trying to uh, uh, keep the distance uh, from the family Casey's family Mammy the Casey's mom uh, who denied that you know uh, her husband and uh, the Kaiser were not killed because of uh, were not died because of the Ebola but uh, they had been part and uh, she wanted to convey the message in such way because people are not ready to talk to the family uh, but you know some of the people have accepted but many people didn't accept this in the state okay so the family later you know allowed Kaiser to stay uh, sharing one room with three family members since you know people are not ready to talk to the family they are not ready to share uh, uh, you know anything with this family uh, that's why she wanted to uh, convey the message in such way but still you know after uh, sometimes the uh, neighbors demanded that uh, KZ should be taken away when he was you know infected okay during the treatment he was you know needs he needs to be taken away from there so otherwise you know they said they'll call the authorities and report about this so one of his aunts uh, cases aunt Tina Dorian she was ready to uh, you know serve uh, Kaiser when he was in treatment okay she said you know if uh, the Ebola want to kill me, let it kill me. But uh, I cannot uh, uh, be away from Kaiser, Kaiser's family. I need to serve him. He is in the need of help. So later, since his condition become, you know, very bad, uh, the family, uh, you know, took him outside uh, okay, nearby church. So finally, um, he was declared that, you know, he had no strength. He cannot move anywhere. And uh, the congregation, you know, group gathered and around the Kaiser and they started pray for him. Kaiser family took no precautions, okay. Uh, Kaiser was, you know, a good uh, basketball player since the last match and the last game, you know, he played well. Uh, his fan uh, handed him about $50, 50 uh, American dollars. So before uh, his death, uh, Kaiser, you know, was... Uh, crying and uh, he was thinking that you know somebody was choking and uh, somebody was you know uh, reached his neck and uh, uh, he said uh, the spirit you know standing over him and choking him uh, that is how you know uh, he was uh, telling before his death and his, his eyes you know wide open and that fellow burst into tears and died so even after so many deaths happened you know during the uh, Ebola outbreak the government was not able to provide all the basic ways, basic, you know, facilities to protect people. Fishermen who was, you know, doing the service of the funeral, they were given about $60, uh, dollars, 60 uh, American dollars uh, for the work which they are doing. The men who are doing the uh, funeral work, they drank well because they justified 
uh, only in the boozing mood they could do the work well uh, now uh, there was a heavy rain uh, after that uh, the men okay who uh, did all the funeral work for uh, uh, this fellow and uh, finally there was no family he said okay because uh, the family there were about seven people were died the same family uh, because of this ebola outbreak there are you know many relatives of uh, ebola victims are uh, believed to you know have carried out secret burials across the region because bodies are simply you know uh, you know they, they don't want to reveal the outside uh, that people have uh, died they wanted to bury the dead bodies secretly uh, because you know it was said like you know these type of burials should can contribute to uh, the significant undercount of ebola dead in liberia and syria and uh, guinea so these are the three states you know which were affected too much because of this virus so it was you know countless death uh, they couldn't you know provide uh, the exact numbers of uh, the death of uh, ebola virus because many people uh, buried the dead body secretly so this is all about uh, the story called uh, a family shattered okay all these things are being narrated by teddy dobby a 21 years old who is uh, uh, case's friend okay uh, he was standing in the you know mangrove swamp uh, next to the dead body of uh, uh, Kaiser from there he is explaining how this fellow dead body has come here how he was died okay so with this uh, we'll uh, stuff uh, for the day uh, uh, please subscribe the channel uh, thanks for listening